<laughs> Sorry. Thank you, Emilio. That we love you, been, Emilio. That might have been my fault. Oh, yeah, I still got that timer going. What's up, people? We back. We back for, oh, uh, what is this, week four? Um, yeah, this is episode four. Absolutely. We had it again. We had it again. Which one of these say timer, Josh? Because I'm uh, still blind, this is by clock. the way. This is clock. There we go. So. Yeah, so welcome, uh, Magic well, After Dark. We're doing uh, big things tonight. We're going to be uh, talking about some finance. We're going to be talking about some budget decks. Um, we're also going to have uh, Chris's Judge's Corner this week. We got Judge's Corner. Yeah. I'm prepared this time. Yeah, he's going to be prepared this time. I know um, what I'm doing. Yeah, we've, we've got some pretty cool stuff going on um, with the community. Um, I think it's really positive. Um, there's been some negativeness floating around on... Uh, <laughs> Make sure the audio works because he set it up today. Good job, by the way, because you got it right. Thanks, buddy. I would have gave you hell if it wasn't. Yeah, but, go uh, ahead, community. Yeah, so there's been a lot of uh, negative stuff going on in our, our community in Michigan. Um, and so that's something that uh, we want to talk about. Um, that'll be in a little bit. But first, I think the first thing that we uh, we want to get into is um, a deck that we talked about very, not even briefly, just absolutely barely brushed on it. Um, I think it was episode three, um, which was last week we talked about um, Mono Green Stompy. That was either episode two or three, yeah. Yeah, that so... Was one. So... The reason we want to talk about this deck in Modern um, is because uh, this deck uh, is a budget list, and it's been performing very well. Um, and we had some guys here at our local store, uh, Pandemonium Games. Um, we had them um, play testing this and just really raving about it. So who's um, all playing this? I didn't know the guys were playing this. Yeah, there's there's been several guys. Uh, that have been playtesting this. Well, it's just got to um, be the Seal Leaf Champion, right? That's the whole is. thing that sets yeah, it so apart. The, the hype around this uh, this deck is the new edition of Steel Leaf Champion. Mm -hmm. um, now, before good they card, were using uh, the mono green version of Ball Lightning. So um, What? That was a thing? Yeah, it's a 6-1. It's the exact same fucking thing as Ball Lightning. It's just green. It's called Groundbreaker. Okay. Um, oh, he's got a groundbreaker. Yeah, he's got a groundbreaker. Okay. So, <clears throat> this is we're using uh, t um, a local guy, Terrence Vincent. Um, Shout out to Terrence. Yeah, he uh, he's using this list, which uh, he said, um, "What's this guy's name?" Scroll. Up oh, a bit. Uh, Corbin. Corbin Dallas. It's not Corbin Dallas. Multipass. Oh, I don't even have the camera on me, so they don't even see it's... me doing the multipass. Yeah. Yeah, it's... she knows it's a multipass. <laughs> she knows. Corbin Hosler. Corbin Hosler. Cor so, I'm sorry. Corbin he's a, Hosler. He's a TCG guy. He named it Budget Steel, uh, Steel Leaf Stompy. Um, so, what does this deck run? Yeah, so just scroll back up. Oh, I, I, well, I, I'm so scroll interested. To the main I'm sorry. Deck. Scroll to the main deck. Oh, okay. There you go. So, um, your basic package, I'll go over this. Here, give me, the, give me that. You want the mouse? <laughs> I got the mouse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so your basic package here is... Uh, Avatar Resolute. Yep. Uh, four Dryad Militants. Really good against um, Experiment kind of One. It's cards of house. Uh, Galta. Oh, um, single Galta. Agree to disagree? Uh, I've I think, never. I think I saw Terrence playing this earlier. He, and he, and well, he, kept, he kept saying, mm. all you have to do is be able to count to 10. And I told him, can't do that. That's a lot of it's effort. A lot of math. It's a lot of effort. So, what, uh, what our local guy did is he cut a Galta for, or he cut this this one of spicy groundbreaker. Yeah, it's not that it's nothing spicy. spicy. It's pretty great. Um, was cut for a second Galta. Oh, yeah. um, again, that, that could be greedy. I don't know. I like I like the haste because I feel like groundbreakers in this deck, you're probably playing it on like your turn four or five. It's not your turn three. Your turn three is like your, your Steel Leaf or. Like a two drop and a one drop. If there are more, yeah, there's plenty of one drops. Yeah. There's all the the experiment ones and the dry militants. I think this is like your setup to like alpha swing kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so you've got your um, really the the main the main portion of this deck is to cast an aspect of Hydra. Dark creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is your devotion to green. You're gonna have a lot of that. Yes. So uh, this card is very very uh, important because. All your guys are most likely going to have Trample because you're playing four Rancors in the deck. Yeah. Uh, so this card is just absolutely fucking nuts. Usually, like, turn five, you've got a guy out on board, and you're swinging. If you if you have a Rancor on, um, like, the new... What's, the Steel the Leaf? Guy? Steel Leaf Champion. Yeah. 
So he's a 5-4, correct? Yes. Yeah. So at that point, he's a 7-4. And he can't be blocked then, by creatures with power 2 or less. Yeah, like, he just has he has pseudo, uh, what is that? Menace? Pseudo, I, I don't even know that it's pseudo menace. It's, he has pseudo menace the little guy. Pick sure. on the little guy. Yeah, so... Uh, you know your your goblin guides, your swift spears, your you're not non buffed. Um, you're not double triple blocking this guy with yeah. With your, well, your you're non buffed humans. Guys. Yeah, you're non buffed humans. Yeah. They they can't block this guy. Um, so on like turn four, you're looking at um, you know turn one. You know you're probably gonna go dryad militant or experiment one. Sure, sure. Uh, turn two, hopefully a tusker, and then by then you have uh si- you have six devotion. Okay. Sure. So if you're able to play a Rancor on this guy, and you're able to... Seven, that's and then seven you devotion, aspect? And then you aspect. So this guy's going to be seven, a... Plus seven? Yeah, plus seven, plus seven. He's going to be a 14, seven. 13. Yeah, you're right, because the Rancor's plus two, plus oh. Yeah, he's going to be a 14, 13 trampler. And you're swinging with two other uh, dudes, right? That cannot be blocked. So again, most of the time it doesn't, it doesn't so much matter that they even have blockers, because everything has trample in this deck. Sure. Um, and so, when you have something like a fourteen thirteen coming at you, this is what they call getting Kentuckied. Okay, <laughs> I almost forgot that we were going to talk about that. <laughs> Got your ass. That's a Josiah quote. Yeah, because so, when we were in Kentucky, shout out to Josiah. <laughs> he kept referring like we asked him like, "What'd you play against last round?" He'd be like, "I got Kentuckied." And he yeah. was always referring to Mono Green. Mono Green Stompy. They just love <laughs> it in Kentucky. Kentucky. We talked about it, but they do. They love it. And so, so I, I like this card in this deck, but I like the one just under it, the Strangler Root guys. Yeah, that's this, one. Of, that's one of my oh, old green oh, yeah. like ag- aggro creatures. Yeah, this, this card's is such great. a good card. Um, in our stream chat, uh, there is a question: Does the list play Bl- Blossoming Defense or Heroic Intervention? No. Uh, so let's let's uh, check it, out the sideboard, Chris. Well, hold on. I want to look at vines. I want to see if you like you would Jesus. play it in place of vines. No, you would never. Target creature gets. Da, da, da. Yeah, so vines is just straight up better. Vines, yes. Yeah, well, it's not. It's better in the main board, okay? Because, sure. Because uh, what people are gonna do when they, you know, when they move to sideboard, they're like, okay, I'm playing against a creature deck. I gotta bring in my extra oh, removal, spot removal. removal. Yep. Uh, you know, you got your terminates. Uh, you got your fatal pushes. You got your path to exiles. Yep, and you got your yep, lightning yep. bolts that are going to get there against some of your guys. Lightning bolt. So, um, yeah, no, vines of asswood is superior. I'm not sure what what the dismembers are. I, I get think it. it's just to remove. Okay, so I don't hear me out. Eldrazi Tron's still a thing. Sure. I feel like this is just to remove the the one big thing that can block. Or this is actually a really cool card because like. You say, okay, Steel Leaf Champion's all buffed up, like you said. It's got a uh, Rancor on there. We got an Aspect ready to go. And you go, Combat, attack with this. Before blockers, make your big dude really small. It now has two power. It can't block. Or just straight up kill it. Ooh, I didn't think about that. Yeah. That's very sexual. Right? Yeah, so you can neg five it into an Oblivion. Right. But what... What's really gonna neg? Well, like, well, uh, I mean, a really don't say like a Death Shadow. No, don't no, say no. A if you, Death I mean, it could be, but like, <laughs> a, stupid. But like, your mid to late game where you don't want to be with this deck um, against against Shadow with, with Taskers or Gurmag mm-hmm. Anglers, and oh, what was the other one? Uh, um, just really big Tarmogoyce. Sure, that's all I got. Make them like one twos. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Or zero ones. Yeah, and you're just like, ha, ah, sucker. Thanks yeah. for thanks for not attacking master. <laughs> All right, so yeah, let's check out the sideboard. So he's he's playing uh, he's playing choke. I mean, blue, white, and modern, and just guy has been a growing thing. Cutting them off sure. of their islands. Well, is pretty you're cool. gonna you're gonna cut them off of uh, supreme verdict. Yeah. Or multiple supreme verdicts. Yeah. In that in this case, you're gonna, um, cut, you're gonna cut them off of. So a fairy. creeping corrosion. It's you know green shatter storm. Yeah. There's nothing, you know. Uh, the, the one, the one deck that you want to beat and, is the deck that races you. Yeah, Affinity right? races really well. Yeah. Um. So you got four, four damping, damping spheres. sphere. What? It's dampening. No, it's damping. <laughs> Learn to it, read. I call it a dampening sphere. The whole, the whole. Welcome episode to two. America. All right. Where so, our language is so now, stupid. Now feed the clan. Uh, you definitely want these in the sideboard, and it's not just for burn. Uh, you know, you can. You could bring this in against uh, other aggro matchups sure. to buy you. Like, this can be a fog. You know, you, yeah. could, you could alpha swing, 
and uh, you know if they're gonna if they're gonna kill you on the crackback, you gain ten life in response to the you know in response to damage sure. after before block you know after blocks. Sure, sure, sure. Um, so you got your gut shots. This is probably gonna help you get through. Um, like I mean to be honest, like Thalia is actually is a real fucking thing against this deck. Um, that's always the first thing I think about against Gutshot. What? Because well, it's no. the first strike aspect. Because like, well, it's not really. Know, it's, it's not. It's not so much first strike. It's playing your aspect of Hydra and your Rancors and being able to fucking you know use your vines of Asswood. Yeah, but like the Taxes deck has so little like interaction except for when it's trying to interact with your lands and there's like an Arbor on the field. Sure. So like, you don't need your vines so much. Like unless they have like a vial on three and they're gonna flicker, but like. But I feel like you just you just set up you go you try to go a little bit wider than them and you have yeah. a more aggressive creature package than them, so like you just swing and they're like I'm forced to chump block a bunch of things and you're like sweet okay I'll pay two for this aspect of the hydra that's fine. Well yeah so in like the mini ma uh, aggro matchup the the biggest thing is always how aggressive your package is. <laughs> Did you even realize what you were saying? Is that what just off the All cuff? Right, so next, uh, Relic of Progenitus. Yeah. Uh, that's a no-brainer. A couple of those are fine. Yeah, that's great. Thrag Tusk, Swag Tusk, sure. Swag Dad. Sure. I like the sideboard, but I I feel like it definitely could use some editing. Like four. Yeah. I think I think he ran four sphere here so, to really like get some solid testing. In sure. On it. Yeah. Like, sure. I don't know that it needs well, four. I've heard that every like online. Um, it's just. Uh, what is it? Uh, that, storm. Storm is just everywhere. 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 So when we when we start doing our streams, our our magic afternoon streams where we're doing uh -huh. moto stuff on Wednesdays. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna want to make sure that we have some damping spheres. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, we don't need a we need don't don't need four, but this guy has four, so I yeah, say we so play six. I guess my responding to chat uh the the blossoming defense i've seen that card is absolutely fucking ridiculous mm, like oh i thought you were gonna say garbage no yeah it's, yeah, it's, it's a good card the card is nutty because again like i said really everybody's gonna be bringing um hate from the you know yeah. kill spells from the sideboard so here you go cut two spheres play yeah, two absolutely. uh blossoming defense yeah and heroic intervention i i like that card a lot but i i think at this point like uh, like Gutshot, I think Gutshot is an absolute fucking pile of shit in this list. I don't know why you would run it. Other I don't than know, maybe a little bit more reach or just a little bit more creature removal. They don't have yeah, but creature if... removal outside of Dismember. Yeah, but listen, if everything has trample, what the fuck do you? What are you trying to kill? I think I'd are you rather have, to slow down the I'd, race. I think from... I'd rather find like some kind of fight mechanic. Yeah, Bear Puncher. Yeah. No, I'm being serious. He's savage, Savage Punch. S savage. Uh, yeah, Savage Punch or yeah. uh, Uvenwall Tracker. Chris, one of my fellow Magic players, asked, how do you fit... <laughs> okay. Yeah. Answer his question. <laughs> I don't want to answer don't his question. Don't laugh about it. You answer his question. I don't answer his question. Oh, it's by eating Josh's leftovers. That's how I do it. I like that answer. Yeah. All right, cool. So... Uh, I fucking walked right into it. I didn't even yeah. read it before it started out loud. So we looked over uh, Stompy. Uh, this deck is... Honestly, this deck is uh... Corbin. This is a cool deck, man. Corbin, I like it. Yeah, Corbin, you're you're probably watching right now. Um, so yeah, good job. Good job, Corbin. Uh, let's let's check out the uh, the numbers on this deck. That's actually what I wanted to check. I, I asked that earlier. How you're like you... scroll back up. Well, look how, look buy look deck. Up. All right, let's buy the deck. All right, so this, this is, is like a buy direct yeah. TCG. Okay, okay. Mass entry TCG. Add, add to cart. Let's add to cart. Uh, so I was told this deck's under a hundred dollars. I would assume so. Steel leaves are three bucks, five bucks. Okay, so yeah, most of our money's tied up in. Uh, it doesn't. It, Galta. It's, it's straight. And relic um, progenitus is like five bucks. It was like nineteen forests and and one other thing or whatever. Uh yeah. One other land. Yeah, nineteen forests and a treetop village. Okay. Cards, sure. Cards got trample. Okay, so you guys should have your fetch lands. Throw some fetch lands in here. Thin your deck. Yeah. You don't care. Like, you're going to kill them on turn four or five. You don't care about your life total. Just do it. You have Feed the Clan in your sideboard. <laughs> Bring it in to offset your fetch lands. What the it's fuck fine. is wrong with this mass it's entry? It's thinking because it's you trash. you put foil on there. I did put foil on Have there. you never TCG'd before? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm right. I just sell on TCG. I'm always I right. I don't fucking buy on TCG. What's this say? I'm not him. Who's this? All right, here we go, I don't know baby. this name. I can't read it. I'm the so deck, The deck... Costs 83 bucks. 82 dollar. 
and 27 cent. So, again, um, this deck... The lands are in there, too. <laughs> yeah, lands it literally money, tried to get you to buy the basic lands. Yeah. So, um, this is, like, one thing that I kind of wanted to spotlight this week is... Um, I hear a lot of people, you know, because... My job is to, you know, sell magic cards. So I hear a lot of people saying, "Josh Warren, I can't, modern is expensive." Yeah, I can't. They're like, I can't get it into is. modern. I can't afford it. Um, and again, decks like this um, that are uh, really putting up good numbers right now, um, and this thing is just it puts a clock on you. So this is something that you probably would want to uh, want to get into. There's another. What was the other one that we were supposed to talk about? The other deck. Yeah, there was another real good budget deck right now. I don't know, but we can look in just a moment. I want to touch on this for a second yeah, and, the, and the thing that you said. Because, yeah, modern can be expensive. Like, if you want to jump into modern, you're like, man, I really like Jund. Um, I really want to start playing Jund. You can do that eventually. You don't have to drop two grand or whatever it is to, like, pay pay uh, to purchase paper Jund. Um, if, you, if you want to get into magic and everybody needs a starting point. Maybe this deck isn't right up your alley, but, like, it's it's enjoyable enough for you. This is a good deck to, like, start on and grind on and slowly build your collection from. Yeah. You can start working toward John and still be playing Modern for months while you're working on that by playing a deck like this. When I got back into Magic years ago, I started playing a janky uh, Black White Warriors deck in, in Standard. Mm -hmm. Just because, like, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to play and I didn't want to dump hundreds of dollars into it and i was like let's play this 50 dollar deck that like kind of has these cool combo synergies do that all right don't don't just sit on the sidelines forever and be like oh i can't afford this really expensive deck get in with something that you're gonna have some fun with and slowly start working toward the thing that you really want to enjoy i'm so, gonna cry hold on i'm gonna cry get me some give me something to wipe I'm my just, eyes yeah away. just like i got i got something for you <laughs> Oh, I can trade my new Karns for this deck. You sure can. You can get out of your Karns real fast. Don't get out of your Karns. That card's fucking insane. Karn. Whoever, whoever, uh... Hey, you know what we should do? Chatted that up. Don't get rid of your Karns. You know what we should do? What? We should put a, um... Not a high-low. Uh, over-under on the I time... Like the time until Karn gets banned in standard. Get the fuck out of here. You think so? Maybe. Cards. Well, we've seen crazier stuff lately. What they ban that you thought? Ferocidon! Rampaging Ferocidon. Alright, you're right. What, what's the stupid, uh, the ruins, too? Uh, Ramunap Ruins. Yeah, but and then we have something that... like Karn that's a 4-drop well, that can go in any deck, get you immediate card advantage, and, like, just put you so far ahead of your opponent if they can't, like, answer it in a turn, or maybe two. You're so right. So I hate, I hate when you're right. What's the over-under on the time from today... Uh, the 31st of May, the 31st of May, we can go until Karn gets banned. This. Pro Tour is this weekend. Well, then we're going to have actual information this weekend of how many Karns are in the top eight decks. I don't know if that'll be crazy, but there'll definitely be Karns. There'll probably be Heart of Curance, too. Again, Black Red Aggro, if you're not playing it in Standard... So, You're not doing it right. Two weeks, so two weeks I don't, ago, I don't even know why we're having this conversation. We're probably wrong because that deck no, is that deck's that just too was good. in there, right? No, oh, fuck no. He's I thought Karn was in there. Anyway, but like two weeks ago, it was all about like blue white control and stuff like that, and it still kind of is. Yeah, but like but we were talking about red black, and this week red black's on top. It's got the highest percentages. Yeah, the meta changes a lot in standard, so. Yeah. So okay. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm, I'm I'm gonna I'm just gonna pick a number on this because why not? I'm gonna say two months from now. No, I'll, I'll go a little bit. Two and a half months from now, over under, Josh. Under? I don't think he's getting banned. You think? Uh, no, no, no. So you think under two months, two and a half months that he does get banned, or over two and a half months? It's over because he's never going to get banned. Okay. I'm going to go with two and a half and under then. That's why Dad named you Joe Dirt. Joe Dirt. I can see down. Trash. I can see down your. All right. Uh -huh. So uh, let's let's go over uh, let's go over the modern budget list now. So. We went over and talked about, we went through the deck. We kind of, you know, gave a little spotlight. Now, oh. um, another thing I want to talk. Was it this? No. Because I'm so excited about this. I watched somebody die to this the Holy other day. shit. Yeah, relax. I'm so excited. No, go back. I want to talk about it. All right, I'm there. All right, so I saw the professor talk about this. and Oh, what okay, is that I don't want to talk about it anymore. What is that guy? No, he didn't talk about this. 
he just talked about um, wizards, you know, maybe doing something. Sure, sure, sure. But what is a professor now? He's only got a degree in magic. Um. So <laughs> that's not give me quite this. right. Here you can have the you mouse. Can concentrate. You can have the mouse. I'm, I am concentrating. Right. I got Richie so, Thompson messaging me saying if Gavin left his phone here. All right. And I don't think he did. Here we go. Um, G2 Lava Runner. All right. Uh, as long as there are two or more instant or sorcery cards in your graveyard, this guy gets plus one in haste. Here. Uh, sure. Scroll. Scroll in a little bit. There we go. Make yeah, it a little bit bigger beautiful. for people. Because we can see it, but they might oh, not. Oh, this card's really good in... Uh, in um... When the Sage enters the battlefield, look the top four cards of your library, then put them back in any order. Yeah, that seems good. I don't know that I would run four, but like I would I would, I would, would test the stack with four, for it's, sure. It's Super Scry Wizard. It's it's a 1-1 it's a one, one Scry Wizard. And, like, okay, so maybe, maybe I'm very legacy locked, but I feel like there's a lot of turns where... You, you brainstorm or something like that, and you set up the next couple turns, and you, you have a fetch on field, and you don't crack because you, you're everything's going according to plan. And it's got visions. Jesus Just relax. Christ. Can I get there? You're, listen, we've got... I'm so saying that things sage, change. This sage right here, along with opt uh -huh. and serum visions mm -hmm. and fucking fetch lands, is, there's no okay. fetch lands. I, that's why. Well, there's no fetch lands because that's, that's what make it bu makes it budget because scalding turns are like the most expensive one. Oh, but... Course. I don't even think you want that, really, do you? Sure, you, you do. You scry... want to thin yeah, but the you're, deck. But you're setting you're setting yourself up. If you reshuffle, then your ops and your serum visions kind of turn to shit. It doesn't matter. You want you, if you had fetch lands in this deck, you could play eighteen lands as opposed to nineteen. All right, but so but hear me out. It's not a wizard, but instead of the sage that you're you're all big and he's good. Uh, Killed fiend. Killing fiend. Killing fiend. Is he a wizard? No, I said he's not a wizard. So he plays he's a, a sideboard. He's a two one that whenever you cast. I know what he does. Oh, well, he's a, I think well, he's a eat one me. No, he's a two one. Is he? I okay. think so. So we got Soul Scour Mage. Obviously, that thing's great. It's prowess. Doesn't have haste. It's not as good as Swift Spear, but it's still probably really impactful in this deck because, again, you're going to be casting so many cantrips. Mm -hmm. with, you got 22 cantrips. Uh, Storm Chaser Mage. This is a Richie Thompson special. He plays this. Um, and wins SCG. Oh, uh, <laughs> Legacy? Not, oh, was yeah, that what, Legacy. Did he have that in Legacy, the Grixis Delver deck? No, it's just in blue red. Okay. Yeah, but uh, he's the all star in there. That's funny. Um, you know, obviously in Legacy, you can ponder. You can ponder and brainstorm. And, um, Those aren't real cards. And you can um, look at target opponent's hand. How dare you lie to me? What card is that? Taxi Taxian Probe. Taxian Probe, yeah. yeah. All right, so then this is the this, this is, is the, the one that Chris one? and I both have to read. So let's read it with you. Uh, flying haste, three drop, oh. two two. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, wizards you control get plus one plus one till end of turn. Which is your entire team. Yeah, so pretty much like you're a Tarkas. You're using a Tarkas command here. Yeah, but it's kind of on crack. I mean, the Tarkas command's already on crack, so this is yeah. unlike heroin. Yeah. So, and then you of Don't course you got your kids. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, you got your lightning bolts. You got your ops that we talked about. You got your serum visions. Sure, of course. course. Great card. Great card. Good can tripping. And you've got this is lightning wizards bolt. lightning. No, no, no. That says lightning bolt. Uh, yes. Five through eight. That's what that says. Yes. Um, and you've got. Th All right. Four. Uh, we're we're going to have to step back from uh, from could, this list. We can fix that. Yeah, we can fix that. We can to, fix that to zero. Yeah, we can change that to something else. Yep. So I'm we're looking at the sideboard, and I'm not seeing any. Um, what's what's your favorite graveyard mage? Okay. Snapcaster? No, well that's a graveyard mage too, well, but it's a red one. I can't budget. think of the, I can't think of the name. Grim Lava Mancer. Oh, that's yeah. a mage, right? Yeah. You would have you should have some of those in the sideboard. Well, my guess is is that they were trying to keep this under a hundred dollars. Well, they they succeeded. Yes, and so, um, yeah, because you're is, not you're not gonna see Snapcaster. This is cool. Oh, it's beautiful. This you're not gonna see fun. Snapcaster mage. You're not gonna see, um, you know, you're not gonna see your uh, what you talked about the scalding tarns sure, on the side. Sure. Sure. Um, in the mana base, and then you're also you're not going to see any I don't know um, probably Grim Lava Mancer in the sideboard uh, because they were trying to keep it budget. But again, uh, you know Saffron Olive um, he does he does a whole whole series on this. Um, he even play tests these decks, um, you know, and and puts the hurt on some people. So Sa we we talked about this uh, the other day. Saffron Olive. Does more for the the magic community as a whole yeah. than any 
other content creator or pro magic player. Mm -hmm. Saffron Olive is a master. The man knows how to have fun with magic, how to be entertaining with magic, how to sell magic cards. Yeah. And he's great at it. He really, really is. He makes he makes the economy move by doing some of the silliest, the most economy. entertaining yeah. fun stuff. It's it, he, uh, Hats off to Saffron Olive because, like, his decks aren't for everyone. Well, but the guy, the guy does work for Magic Community. He so, does a lot of work. Yeah. So the the biggest thing about um, this list is that, um, and and what it does is it allows your casual guys to come and play um, on a Wednesday, a Tuesday, a, you know what I'm saying? Even and, a Friday. And go Friday, and go at a, least like three two. You think? Like I think you could blow some people out with stuff like this. Yeah. Well, you, this, you tune it a little bit. Sure, but this is one of those. Well, casual players and new players, they're not gonna. They're not gonna uh, really tune this too much, but what they're gonna do is they're gonna dream crush those lances, right? The, you know? the Lance Schultz of the world. Yeah, so they're gonna <laughs> dream you know, crush that all-star player that you have at your F and M. You know that comes in and does you know he's four one five one whatever every single week, uh, and he comes up against a you know a ninety seven dollar and he's like uh, what is going on? Yeah, ninety seven dollar <laughs> and he's like, and he, he just can't beat it. Yeah, because you know the guy curves out on him or whatever. But yeah. um, these are the kind of these are the kind so, of decks that keep new casual players not only in um, trying new formats like modern, but um, it, it brings them back to F and M yeah. to want to play, and that's what what you were talking about. That's what Saffron I'm does see if for I can the get, game. Uh, Mason would like to play this just because it's Wizards and he loves Wizards, but mm -hmm. he doesn't like playing Magic really. Um, so somebody mentioned in, in the stream chat here sure. that he feels like this list has too many cantrips, and I'm just gonna say it again. Uh, I would play some Killed Fiend because Cantrip and Killed Fiend, they're best friends. Doesn't matter that it's not a wizard. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be yeah, huge uh, and it's gonna kill somebody. Fuck the theme of the deck. <laughs> um, it's yeah, wizards in start... their pet lava dog. You never had a pet lava dog when you were a wizard. You're a wizard, Harry. Good thinking. All right, you can have the mouse. Back. I got the mouse. You got the mouse. Back. I have the control. Hi, who's calling? Okay, cool. <laughs> Okay, so we're we're back at it again. So that's that's some budget stuff. Yeah, I mean like that's the we one just, we wanted to hit. Yeah, we really just wanted to um, kind of outline some of these. Um, here, go back, Chris. Go back. Okay, okay, I'm back. I'm back. So just want to outline, I guess. I'm oh, here, yeah, I, I, I lost, I lost so, the power again. All right, so we've got these. Uh, you know, we've got thunderous wizards at ninety eight bucks. Um, green white. Restoration Angel Value Town. Ooh, um, you know you're Ooh. looking at a hundred bucks there. I, I I see three cards. Are, um, I see Ewit, Restoration Angel, and Wall of Omens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you've got mono I'm white, uh, mono white ley lines, uh, vampires. Very, very, very cool casual deck that people want to. Um, I think casuals love vampires. They love tribal. I think in two, maybe two and a half years, this becomes the new human stack. It just depends on on what they print. Yep. Um, I think it's gonna get there. Again, uh, this is cool. You know, you got your Teferi's, uh, Teferi's pool. So it's like a blue-white, like casual um, thirst for knowledge, serum visions, it says here. So, you know, it's whatever. Um, monks. Blue-white monks. Mono-red hollow one, 170 bucks. Um, yeah, like, <laughs> that's really cool. Uh, blue white monks. I don't. That seems ridiculous. Seems great. Um, Have you ever made a bunch of prowess monks? <laughs> no. It's nuts. We do, we don't want to talk to you. <laughs> What's up, Bob? Hi. How you doing? Welcome to the show. You're 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 our guest this week. <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks for calling. What's going on? on? So. What's that? Josh will be back in just a moment. Uh, yeah, Emilio, come on in. I do have a special a special guest this week. Uh, I didn't plan for it, but I got M Emilio uh, Cabello. Yeah. Yes! I said his name right. I never say his name right, Sounds so right. I'm super excited. Here's Emilio. He's normally our cameraman. He normally does all of our adjustments and stuff like that. Don't look at don't look at that. Don't look at you. Look at them. Say hi to them. I'm looking at your setup real quick. <laughs> Get a feel for it. So, uh, Emilio, uh, you've been busy working in the shop lately mm -hmm. uh, here at Pandemonium Games and Hobbies in Garden City, Michigan. The biggest and, and best east of the Mississippi, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you've also, like, you you started off as a Yu-Gi-Oh player in these communities, and we've kind of got you the mag magic sickness as well now, too, right? A bit, yeah. So it's, it's, you got to adapt, sort yeah. of, to your community. Yes. Working with you guys, you guys are all magic players, so it kind of yeah, yeah, helps. Yeah, we, we, all, we all have that. Like, 
would you rather us be Magic players or 40k players? Like, what's going to be a bigger pinch on your on your wallet? The 40k, the 40K. would be yeah, yeah. Be annoying. yeah. That, that's 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 something else for else for the viewers is like understand that yeah, Magic's expensive. There are more expensive hobbies for sure. Um, so Emilio, uh, you you have blue white right now in modern. Yep, I play blue white, and I just sort of got done building. Mario Pyromancer. Okay. Common theme that we've been talking about over the last four episodes is um, what do you prefer in Blue White, uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor or Fury, Hero of Dominaria? So, I've got a chance to play with both recently, luckily. Uh, the, the one or two times Teferi has come up for me, it's been pretty insane. Yeah. Like, I had a game where I was just, like, just totally done. I was stuck on two life. Opponent was super ahead. And I get Teferi out, and he just... He brings me back. Uh, I ended up losing on, like, a last ditch. Like, he drew double bolt and just got me like that. But he, he brought me back in. I had him... I had... I could have gotten him the next turn. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was pretty... It was pretty cool. So, the fairy can do some damage. So our, our resident modern control player, Josiah Valley, mm -hmm. uh, who actually has really great insight on on control kind of magic, or tempo magic even, um, he says that Teferi is just not good in in uh, blue-white. Or maybe or maybe I'm misquoting him. He says that Jace the Mind Sculptor uh, should be played over Teferi in blue-white, but if you're playing Jeskai, Teferi is the way you want to go. I don't have too much experience with Jeskai. Sure. But I can see Jace obviously being more up there just because of the, the brainstorm ability or yep. the ability to control your opponent's draws. It's pretty easy you know, pretty solid, also being a four drop, but I think they both have their pluses and their negatives. Sure. So so I keep getting to the point, at least after the open, I've gotten to the point where every time that I want to talk about these two cards, I actually am leading into a third card. Uh, how many Search for Ascantas and obviously uh, Ascanta the Sunken Ruins do you play in your deck currently? Two. Two. I feel like two is a great number for blue white. I feel like I feel like if you're bigger on on Teferi, so if you're like definitely Jessica Jessica oriented, I think you can get away with three mm -hmm. because uh, the Teferi as Canto lock or or interactions are just nuts. I've seen so many people lately activate their Ascanta, activate the Teferi, end step, untap their Ascanta in another land. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. In a lot of turns, you end up drawing three cards a turn while your opponent is obviously drawing one. Yeah, drawing one or two and then searching. Deep, you know, four cards for a third. It's pretty, right? You know, it, it can be pretty broken. And yeah. like you said, like Teferi just like builds you back out of rough spots. Mm -hmm. he's, he's a powerhouse, right? Right, right. So, so yeah. Um, Teferi is the bee's knees, more of a tempo versus control thing, says uh, one of our viewers in the stream. Mr. Warren, are you done with your impromptu phone call? Whoever that viewer is, tell him he's goddamn right about that. <laughs> Josh says that you are goddamn right. Because fucking Teferi's ridiculous. Teferi is ridiculous. This is true. I am a big fan, for sure. S for I was a big fan from the very beginning, too. I don't get a chance to play too lot, but I like to uh, I th I think that theory craft a yeah, little bit. Yeah, and you should. Every time you get some new cards, like you shouldn't be afraid to think outside the box. And a lot of a lot of time, Magic players, uh, when new sets are coming out and being spoiled, we we tend to like look at new cards and be like, "Oh my god, this is busted!" You know, mm -hmm. you get the community on board. Everybody's like, "Yes, this is the new card." And then we play it, and it's like, "Eh, it's kind of subpar." But then this other thing comes out of nowhere, and like there was like five people that were like, "Yeah, I really like this card. This card's good." Speak up if you if you think that something is good and you want to try it. Like, don't be afraid to have people try and say, "No, you don't know what you're talking about," because they don't know what they're talking about. You should you should want to play interesting magic and and build around special cards. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that was a great session. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, man. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> I love you, buddy. Thanks for the pizza, bro. <laughs> All right, I might have had a phone call, but I had to eat some pizza too. Dude, I was just I was, I was, I was like, huge, huge bitch. What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> I All right, panic so, mode. Um, you know what? A little bit. Now. Uh, I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna let everybody know that this week 
Um, Judge's Corner is going to be more than five minutes. I'll allow Chris to talk passionately. I just got done talking for like five minutes. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm going to actually start it off. Um, but yeah, so I'm not a judge. Chris is actually a level one judge. I am level one certified. Uh, uh, but I will judge the fuck judge. out of you in real life. You really don't. You're, you're, you're pretty open. Judge you. I wish this gavel wasn't here because I can't believe I just made a I joke. I can't believe you I did that. And I was, just, I was just like, I'm just going to ignore it because um, we're going to pretend it didn't happen. Yeah, so um, we have a lot of like uh, pretty, it's very, very cool stuff to be honest. Um, we gave, uh, we came up with uh, Judge's Corner uh, just last week for Chris and it's going to be a mainstay just like it is for our um, our segment every week of what's going on locally because oops our community is the most important community to us um, we want to make sure that everybody knows what's going on here along with um, everything that's going on nationally and you know that helps everybody so Chris has got five minutes on the clock but actually I want this five this first five minutes you're gonna go five I'm gonna go first five so this week on judges corner um, the non-judge that guy is going to uh, actually start the first five minutes, so I'm pretty excited. Ready? Ready, here we go. Set, go! <laughs> Judge some motherfuckers. <laughs> All right, so uh, this week we had a, um, a gentleman in our area come off a six-month suspension. No, it was Wait. longer. I know where you're going, but it was longer. It was six-month suspension for uh, cheating. Uh, uh, he got caught on camera, um, and then... There was a, another six-month suspension stacked on top of that because he was a judge. Right, right. So they got his ass for, uh, for 12 months. Sure. Um, Except it was longer than that. Keep going. Sure. Um, so I, I know I know most of the story, but I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm an okay storyteller. Yeah, you are. I, just, enjoy, I, yeah. I enjoy listening to you talk. Um, so he, he cheated on camera. Um, he... He shuffled, 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 um, kept the bottom card of his deck. Um, uh, he cut, like, so he went to fetch. He put the he put a crumble to dust on the bottom. He was playing against Tron. He shuffled it to the top. It's a very simple trick. Um, and then a lot of times you can do, it's not only sleight of hand, but you can also do a lot of things, like if you guys have seen brain games on, like, TLC or whatever, um, there's a lot of... Oh, like, that's not a game show. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, so yeah, It's yeah. not a game show. It's just um, what they do is um, they show you how to do, like, if somebody takes a hammer and slams it on your fucking fake hand, like if you put your hand under the table... Sure. ...and you have a fake hand and they slam it on there, you can actually feel it. Oh, it's like one of those sense memory things. I've seen that yeah. with, like, they put a divider between yeah. the two hands and this one's fake and this one's real. So, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so there's a lot of things that you can do um, to draw people's attentions away, uh, much like a magic trick. Sure. Not Magic the Gathering, but an actual magic. Uh, pulling rabbits out of hats and shit. So um, this guy, he, you know, it's, it's really easy. You could just shuffle um, and you can put the card on the top, that crumble the dust on top. You can then you can then matchup. set your deck down right, mm -hmm. and then you divert your opponent's attention and say, um, you know, as you have your deck, you slide it towards you. Uh, what what's your life total? Because I have you at uh, seventeen, but I don't know if you're at seventeen don't... or not. And so their their direction goes away from what they're doing. Don't correct? teach them all the tips and tricks. Because like I don't want to encourage them to be no, like, oh my god, it's a good idea. No, it's an awful idea. Listen, I'm a storyteller. Uh huh. You clean it up, judge. After I'm done. Okay. So, uh, you know, there's some diversionary tactics that you can use to get your opponent's, um, you know, line of sight off of what you're doing. So then once you've moved your deck, you know, back, talk to the person, uh, then you move it off to the side where your deck usually goes. Now, there's a lot of people that because they're doing multiple things at once, they can't multitask every single step and then say, oh, I should cut. Because cutting is mostly a secondary thing in Magic. Because you don't really think to yourself, it, first thing I gotta do is untap, upkeep, cut. It becomes like a, a um, yes, muscle memory kind of thing. Yeah, and so um, you know, a lot of times before you like once you're done figuring everything out, there's a lot of like competitive players that go right into it and say, okay, cut your deck, boom, and then we start. Then we start. We go back to the game state. Right. But there's a lot of people that don't, and so that allows you to you know break their concentration, and then sneak that card in that crumble to dust to get rid of it and, and be able to you know finish your opponent off um 
So that's kind of what happened. Um, there was multiple things uh, going on in um, this guy's life at the time. Um, we did a video segment. Uh, Chris did it. Um, I, I won't say we, but you know, um, I, I hope that I encourage to do. I encourage Chris to do things like this uh, more often and bring to light. Um, <laughs> Josh, you definitely try to keep me positive. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to bring to light like things that um, like. And, and this story is like to me. Um, like I told Chris, it's a redemption story. It's not so much about, well, this guy was a judge. This guy then cheated in a tournament. Yeah. Um, and he's trash for doing that. It's not. Like, you know, people have things that go on in their life. And sometimes they bring it into, they, t they bring their personal uh, things into the game. Yeah. And they, um, they do yeah. something stupid. And so. People um, do that with everything. Yeah, correct. And so, and, and people got to remember that this is a game. Number one, this yeah. is a game. And this number two, this is our hobby. Yes. Okay. Magic is our hobby. This is something that we're all passionate about. We all love. And, you know, it's it's a game. So you have to make sure that, you know, you remember that. And so when people uh, were, you know, trying to stone him after it happened and they're saying, you know, kick this yep. guy out for good. Yep. Um, that's not how it works, you know? Yeah. That's not that's not how um, our, um, our game should be. Um, it You know, it should go by the same rules as, uh, you know, like when you get... You know, when you go to court. Yeah, it's not a society should necessarily Correct. be. Correct. Yeah. Like, so, like we have we harsher gotta... punishments for harsh. <laughs> meow. meow. Right. Meow. That's it. That's fine. Meow. Okay. So uh, wow. let me give me like ten seconds. So, you got it. You got it. Um, so really, um, we just wanted to talk about what happened with this. This leads into Chris's, um, you know, judge uh, segment tonight for um, what he's going to talk about. Judge's I corner. Won't, yeah, judge's corner. I won't spoil it, but um, you know, we'll. We'll let Chris talk a little bit about this because he did the video, um, and uh, he'll be able to kind of give you more in depth of what happened and why it is an actual redemption story. It's not to be looked at like, um, you know, this guy cheated because there's a lot of there's there's big names that get caught cheating. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's big names that get uh, you know banned from the game uh, indefinitely. There's uh, you know there's mid level people that you know are grinders. They get. They get a six-month ban and they come back and, you know, some people might, you know, there might be a Reddit battle. Um, but again, Reddit battle. Yeah. Nice. So, but when you're in our in our community in southeastern Michigan, you know, you remember that and you hold that against people. And yeah. you know, whereas like, you know, are are these local guys are they holding it against these bigger names? No, yeah, they like, don't care. Like you said, they're I not got, in their face. Uh, yeah, they're not in their face. They don't play with them. Me. So you got you have to give you have to think about that and give the same type of respect to that person that uh, went and did their time and then came back to the game because um, that's the right thing to do. So, okay. yeah. So, go ahead. You, so give it a crack. My judge's corner this week is actually supposed to be on slow play, but I'll start on this. Yeah. I'll start on this. So I think. I think first of all that we can we can name him. Uh, I don't I don't think that that's uh, a big issue. Uh, I've already worked with him uh, sure. fairly closely about sure. like trying to make sure that like he starts on the right foot and working mm -hmm. with the community to come back. Yeah. So the player's name is Travis Hawk. Um, he is a local player from the Southeast Michigan uh, region, and um, like he's not a monster. He's not necessarily like a, a really bad dude or anything like that. He's Great guy. I like he's, he's like a lot of of magic players like he's just a guy that's got stuff going on in his life just like we all do and magic is his hobby and his escape from that kind of stuff it's something that you try to do to relax and enjoy and as josh pointed out like sometimes like people get into this mindset of like uh, mid the mid-level grinders and stuff like that where they're just like you know i i, I want to make this pro tour i gotta make the pro tour and like it, they ramp themselves up and they forget why they started and yeah. why they're actually playing and they forget to have fun while they're doing it so they get to this point where it's like it's not about it's not about play it's not about skill it's about winning and that can be a really dangerous mindset because you can lead yourself into a path that you're just going to regret and it's just going to hurt um not only yourself but the magic community as a whole um so so travis went to this this pbdq um i think it was actually year and a half ago i think it was like 18 months is the total sure um was I mean, for the length 12, of the suspension 12, 12 months 18 months yeah yeah, yeah. It, it either was, way it was it was quite some time and i think i think it was very fair i think the time that he got was 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 very justified because he he should have known better uh because he was a certified judge he, he knew 
he knew that this was not acceptable in any way, shape, or form. Sure, yeah. He was a judge, so right. he's, he's supposed to be held to a, to a higher standard right. than right. just your everyday F&M guy right. or whatever. But, you know? but tar- I've talked to him about this on and off for the last year and a half, mm-hmm. and it's very clear to me that like he let that stuff, whatever it was going on in his life, because I'm not going to get into that. That's not my business to share. Um, he let that get into his head, and he, he got to a point with Magic where he's just like, it was just about winning. He had to do whatever it takes to win. And while Bob says... Greatness at any cost, that's a cost that no one should be willing to pay. You're flavor text quoting right now? You're a fucking nerd. Yeah, that's what's up. So so Travis made some dumb mistakes, and he, had, and he admits that they were dumb mistakes. He had a hard time admitting to it when it first happened, but um, it's, been a, it's been quite a while now, and he's had to deal with not being able to enjoy his hobby. He, he, can't, he, he couldn't uh, yep. escape from the things that we all use magic to escape from. And uh, that's a really that's a really tough thing. Like, he had it coming. He deserved it for sure. He deserved all the flack and BS that he got from the internet. The the yeah. like you said, people were trying to like stone him basically online. Yeah, the Reddit course. battles and stuff yeah. like that. He had all that coming because he because he cheated and he knew he was cheating, and that's just not acceptable at yeah. all. Yeah. But that doesn't make him any less human. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that like I said, we should go in there and and actually stone him or, or burn him at the stake. Like. Well, he do, served his time. time. He's yeah. he's learned. You come back. Everybody he's learned does. from it a little bit. Everybody does. It doesn't it doesn't excuse what he did. No. But like he's he's been punished. Um, now we can start the healing process. Like now that now the time is he would like to rejoin the magic yeah. community and, and, and that and, was and you magic know, play. You made the you made the video that was yeah. you know, again was supposed to uh, you know, again, it's supposed to be a redemption story. Um, it's not made to be like Let's highlight this guy, and you know, let's let's dull down, let's dull down cheating, and, and make it okay because it's not. We you know we all know that, and so yeah, that um, that should be obvious. But what's yeah. not obvious is that like he's he's human, and he realizes that he made the mistake, and he wants to he wants to start to build back up from well, it. Well, yeah, and so, so let, let me say this: uh, yeah. what what Chris did was he's able to highlight and say, hey, um, you know. Tell us why you did this. Yeah. Tell us, um, you know, your reasons behind what you did. And he did. He, he he put he laid it all on the table. And this is able to get it out there, you know, so that he can say, um, I put it all on the table. I'll let you guys know, um, you know. And a lot of people don't get the chance to do this, to, you know, to get on camera and say, this is what happened. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry for it. Because yeah. at that time, I ruined, I ruined my passion, my pastime. And and I wanted it back so bad that, you know, I and, had to make sure that I come and, and tell my story. And this this whole interview that I did with Travis, um, which you can be find, you go to Facebook and you join our Michigan uh, Modern group on Facebook. Yep. You can come in here, you can check the video out, you can listen to the story. This is this is kind of like the first step to like trying to, re, re, it's a redemption story, like you said. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think that this is a very good start. So this, the whole interview video type thing was my idea. Travis was very like hesitant against. He's like, yeah. I don't know. He was he was worried that people were just gonna like straight up attack him kind of thing. Sure. And while there was a little bit of like, hey dude, I still don't trust you kind of thing. It wasn't anything nearly as bad as what he was expecting. In fact, a lot of it was like, welcome back. I'm I'm happy to work with you again. Yeah. I'm happy to start rebuilding these relationships that we that we had before. Because again, Travis isn't a bad guy. He just did a really dumb thing, and he he's lost. Timer. Yeah, it's probably it's probably done. Meow. <laughs> Meow. So Travis, um, I'll wrap up. So 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 his his actions and the time spent doesn't excuse everything. It doesn't just wipe it clean. No. He's got to start from scratch, yeah. and he's got to start even from several feet behind, kind of thing. Because sure. he's gonna come down. He's gonna sit down to play magic against people, and people are gonna like, I know who you are. I know what you did. Like I'm watching you, kind of thing, and and Travis is prepared now at this point to like be like, yeah, dude, like I did something really dumb and I regret it, and I want to I want to show you and the rest of the magic community that like that's not me, and that yeah. it's never going to be me again. Yeah. And so I I I mess he talked to me today uh, real quick and he, and he said you know what I think that turned out way better than I was expecting. Yeah. I like 
I appreciate it. And uh, again, like you and I were talking. Yeah, hats off to you for making the video, man. This was just something that I was I was just trying to make this something that the community could openly talk about. That this wasn't something that people were like well, scuffling around this, and, you know, and this, talking behind people's backs. This and stuff is like that. It's not like, only a... this is worth talking to him in a uh, constructive way. Yeah, this it, isn't just a local thing. This is a national thing, man. You know, you everybody at their LGS has somebody that they know is they know is a cheater or they know that has maybe cheated mm -hmm. like just a couple times but you're or like or like or just completely lost their shit and like blown up on a day or something like that and you're yeah. like I don't, get that guy the hell out of here yeah. yeah you're right you should get the hell out of here but, but like yeah. that doesn't that's people in have, most yeah. in most of those situations it's not like that person can ever return if somebody somebody lost their shit and was like it says that they're gonna kill somebody or something like that it's like yeah that guy probably just needs to go for good yeah but like all right so know. hey we've got um We've got Tex. I think that might be Terrence. Techno sure. Mage. Because he's talking about uh, spreading seas and stuff We've like that. We got Techno Mage. Ooh, Techno Mage. I like that. So he says, um, this will this will lead it right into your second segment. Is um, play more spreading seas. Uh, Techno Mage, <laughs> you're actually wrong about that. Spreading no, seas. Spreading can, seas is uh, awesome right now. No, spreading seas can eat my ass. Yeah. Because it just destroys uh, your little turn one. Um, and blood crypt. a few seconds later, he also said, "My wife likes slow play." <gasps> slow play. That's is clever. Ding, ding, ding. That's clever. Leading it in, he said, "My like my uh, wife likes slow play." This is a good topic. Um, I'm not sure if this if uh, like we we can like move into something if else if you had another one that you wanted to talk about before no, we go into no, me like if, talking at the camera again. Yeah, no. If Techno Mage um, actually has a wife, which I, don't I know think I think that. it's I think it's Terrence. I, I think it. it's Terrence because he's talking about spreading seas. Okay, that's his number one topic. All right, so put put five more minutes on the clock, man. Well, before we go into what you should do with spreading seas, I don't know, little, or not spreading seas with slow play. Um, I would like to put it to you, Mr. Josh Warren. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Josh Warren, all of us have been slow played against. I, I, I would say that at least a large majority of Magic players in competitive or even at their F&M kind of thing, um, somebody has knowingly taken advantage of the clock and slowed way down and tried to waste a little bit of time, which is technically stalling, by the way, but many players it. refer to it as slow play. I've done it. Well, you're a monster. Don't care. I have not done it. Don't care. It's yeah, part of so the game. Keep uh, scoreboard. Scoreboard. Um, it's the gray mat. It's the gray matter portion of the it, game. It, it can be tricky. It can be tricky. So, so Josh, you're you're, you're playing at an event and you've been sure. slow played before. What is your general approach to when you believe your opponent is slow playing you? How do you recognize it? What do you do? So my gen do. my genital approach to this. Your would genital be approach? Did I? Did I start? He said genital, right? No. You guys heard that. My uh, my genital approach is um, <laughs> fucking troll. Uh, is so the first thing I do is get upset. Okay, that's a shocker. To be honest, because I'm like, so you pay to life, got it? Yeah, so I'm like, bitch, I know you're slow playing me in my head. In your head. Yeah. Right. And I'm just thinking to myself like, stop, just stop. So then, right. What I will say to my opponent is, oh, that's fucking weird. <sighs> in my mind sure but i'll say that's weird uh you know can you um can you kind of hurry up we only have and then i'll look at the clock and i'll get the time we only have six minutes and 54 seconds left. Sure, sure sure i actually had to do this at uh at the scg in Louisville uh two weeks ago <laughs> um, Louisville. i was playing against a jess guy player and we started game three with six minutes left on the clock wow. and um so i had to tell him hey there's six 25 on the clock. You're you know. playing an aggro deck. You, had, you well, definitely yeah, had the opportunity I'm, to win, but you needed Yeah, like I can win on deterrence. turn four, but again, if I'm playing against Jeskai and it's a Lightning Helix, um, you know, Lightning Bolt, mm -hmm. uh, Slugfest, um, then I'm going to need I'm going to need probably 10 minutes to finish that game. Sure. Um, so yeah, so what I, you know, this is what I told him. I said, I, I announced to him the, the amount of time on the clock and then uh, I hurried up and shuffled and then I presented my deck and I just kind of stared at him, <laughs> to be honest. Like, and if I felt at any time he was taking too much time and you know being fake with it and um, you know really actually slow playing me, um, I was gonna then call a judge. Sure. But I didn't need to call a judge because I didn't. At, there was no time where I felt like he was taking too long. For sure. Um, you know, 
an extended period of time or however you know sure. the rules read. And what would you say to the judge? As because I have two methods for calling slow play, uh, and one's a little bit more subtle than the other. What what would yeah, you this do was, so when, like, when calling a judge for slow play? This is the thing that I, I really loved. Like this is the coolest judge's corner yet. So uh, you know I, I I got this idea from Chris because he taught he was talking about it on the way home. Um, because another Josiah guy that we rode with, questions. yeah, Josiah, um, he said, well, "How do I how do I get around slow play? Like because I play um, I play control and mm -hmm. uh, people are motherfuckers are trying to slow play me all the time, <laughs> and it's true because yeah. like you're in game three or you know you're they're in game two and they're like draw and they got one card in their hand oh, and man. it's a fucking land Which and they check it seven do different I play? times. Hmm. Yeah, so um, and he was asking the question and Chris said. Uh, he had the, the most amazing way to look at it, and I've never thought about it this way. I don't even remember what it said, so I'm so excited uh, right now. But yeah, um, so um, my idea of what I would do and uh, would just be like, call the judge over, judge! And I would say, I literally at the table, I would say, um, you know, this guy's taking a, an excessive amount of time. Can you sit and watch our game to hurry him up? I would say that right in front of the fucking judge. Well... You have an amazing approach at it, and what you said was, um, you know, if if hopefully you have a card in hand so that you can actually go and do this. Well, you could you could do you it could just like say a you know sure kind of you question. could just say like judge can I uh, you know can I talk to you away from the table right so then your opponent uh, so then you're gonna break the game right sure. so you're then gonna, at that gonna, point you're gonna do like everything stops yeah right every, here, at that point you, you broke the game sure uh, so then you get up and the judge is already gonna give you however one minute or two minute extension. Uh, from that point, most likely. Sure. Um, yeah, most likely. Um, sure. So you're going to walk away from the table and you're going to say, Judge, um, I don't actually have a rules question. And you're going to be looking at your cards and right. you're going to say, um, I wanted to let you know that my opponent, I believe my opponent is slow playing. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to hover or you know hang out and uh, make sure that um, he's not slow playing right. and that you can move the, the game ahead in a, a reasonable amount of time. Right. And... That kind of blew my mind because I was I was always under the impression that you just had to like call a judge. <laughs> you and just fucking, had to be very abrupt about yeah, it. Yeah, and just this guy's a we're, dick. We're He's going fucking slow it. playing me. Sure, um, that's you know kind of the common one, I guess. That is that's absolutely common. Sure. It's there's no you know there's no like there's no real rule book or um, there's not a good way to talk about how to go about slow play and that's why we're doing this judge's yeah, corner yeah 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 there's no well there's no so i'm gonna have a nice graphic in the future there's no judge's corner is gonna fly across the screen it, i i already know that <laughs> uh but yeah there's no there's no real um proper etiquette magic book maybe we should do a special on uh proper etiquette that's what i'm doing man that's gonna be part of my series here going forward Whoa. i'm just gonna pick little things apart one by one we're growing we're growing so right okay so let's let's get the clock why does it say meow again? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. So, for slow play. Slow play in the magic community has a stigma on it. It's like, whenever you're calling slow play, you are being a dick. This is not true. Because slow play happens quite often, and players just, sometimes they're not aware of it. Uh, sometimes they feel like they're being reasonable. Uh, sometimes it's that you've been like snapping off turns one after another, no problem, super quick, um, and then you get to a really tanky turn, and your opponent, they're, they're the one that's been taking a lot of time, but you, you start tanking, you think about it, and then your opponent slow plays you or something like that, or starts, or calls slow play on you. Um, slow play is a stigma that we can definitely overcome as a magic community. It's, it's a, it's a tricky one. Because people abuse calling on it, and people abuse doing it. Um, and the hardest part is just making sure that like, when we recognize it, we're not afraid to act on it. So as Josh mentioned, I have two methods for uh, not necessarily identifying, but calling out slow play. Those, the one I kind of developed when I went to GP Atlanta last year. I was playing against a gentleman, I think in like our round three, so it was fairly early in the day still. And uh, we had some good conversations. He had said that like he wasn't super familiar with the deck, uh, but we were both playing like the tier one deck in the format. And I had some practice. He didn't appear to have much at all. So his his choices, his turns were taking a lot longer. Uh, we finished our first game in that match, and that match is generally going to go to three. Um, we finished it with maybe 20 minutes, maybe less than that on the clock. And uh, most of it had been on his turn. So when we're sideboarding, 
I call a judge over. I step away with some of my sideboard cards, and, and, I, and I say, while we're still at the table, I say, I say, Judge, I'd like to ask you a question about a sideboard card kind of thing. Step away, and I say, hey, I'm not actually going to ask you a question about sideboarding. I just kind of want to pretend that like this is what we're talking about so that my opponent doesn't get the wrong idea or about what I'm trying to do here. I want to let you know, I believe he's taking a little bit of extra time here. He might not be doing it on purpose, but like it's eating up a lot of time. We need the time on the clock so that I we said. can play. I know, I know. I'm going into it. So... So, hey, if you could hang out and watch us, and if you feel like we're, we're taking a little while, push us along. And he did, and it was fantastic. Uh, I can't remember the judge's name, but he was, it was really cool. He hung out in our area for quite a while, and there, I felt there were several times where he was about to be like, hey, man, I need you to make a play to my opponent. And, like, just before that, the guy would make a choice and start playing. Um, but there were there was, while we were sideboarding, he's like, hey, guys, you guys have been sideboarding for almost two minutes now. You should really start figuring this out. I have something in my eye, and it really hurts. Um, Josh, will you hand me a, a, a tissue from back here? You're so sweet. It hurts. So that's method one. You don't want to be the dick, but, like, you, you feel that you're not getting a fair share of the time on the clock in the round. So... Talk to the judge's side. Judges want to help you. That's what they're there for. So they're gonna they're gonna do their best to like assess situations and they're gonna try and stick around if they can to uh, to like deter that kind of behavior. Method number two is the guy that's like, okay, crushed a game one. Um, okay, this is gonna be like the extreme lantern player. This is not all lantern players. This is this is some lantern. Yes, players. it is. No, it's it is all no, it is. lantern. I'm not gonna be able to do this in time. Lantern is trash. No. So. Give us a cliff notes. Oh my god, my eyes hurt so bad now. Sorry. Um, so they win game one, right? Lantern player wins game one. They're and and they've been moving through because they're like, I gotta get this guy dead. I gotta get yeah. this guy dead. And you haven't, you didn't realize how they locked you out. They locked you out. You're like, okay, I guess I concede. We'll go to game two. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, they slow way down. Yeah, of course. All of their actions take a lot of extra time. They double, triple check their hand. Double check, triple check. The, the cards in graveyards, they ask you multiple times how many cards you have in your hand. Like, information that you've given them, and you've given them very clearly, and for some reason, like, they're going back at it. This is slow play. This is stalling. This is illegal and should not be happening. Um, if it's kind of absent-minded and it's just like, I feel like I'm in a rough spot, I don't know exactly what to do, that's more of the slow play area. And it's totally fine, and you should call a judge and say, hey, my opponent's taking a lot of time here. I think we, uh, could you watch this? Could you help us out? Kind of thing. What I like to do before I jump to that is I like to say to my opponent, um, you know, what's what's the line going to be? I like wait like 30, 40 seconds, something like that. And I'm like, so what's it going to be, man? What, what course of action are you going to take here? And if they continue for another 30 seconds to a minute, that's when I'm going to be like, well, 30 seconds. 30 seconds max from there, I'm going to be like, I need you to make a play. Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to be dick. I know you're in a rough spot, Absolutely. but I need you to make a choice. Yeah. We, we got to move. And, and then, like, some more time, 20 seconds, 30 seconds go by, um, call a judge. And I had this happen at the Open in Louisville as well. Mm -hmm. This was, like, my round four opponent or something like that. And I don't think, again, that he was doing it intentionally. But, like, it was enough of a, of a, of a thing Listen, that he knew I don't was care. Happening. I don't care how meow. bad... Meow. meow! I don't care how bad your social cues are. You know when you're slow paying. Any, anybody knows it when they're so, slow playing. So in that match, I'm playing against a, a Valakut player, and we were in game three, and I'm pretty sure that he was he was thinking about, like, how do I get out of this mess? He's going to combo me next turn. Um, what, are my, what are my lines out? I think that's how it started, but then I think it devolved into, like, I don't think I can win from here. I need to get an, a draw here. I, this game needs yeah, to not end absolutely. so that I can get a draw on the match, mm -hmm. and my record's better. Yep. And that's not okay. Again. That's when you know that you're slow playing. Right. Everyone knows they're doing it. So I went through method two with that player. I, I you know, some time went by. I said, so what do you think, man? What's what's the line going to be? He's like, I'm in a difficult spot. I'm not exactly sure. And I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. man, well, you know, think about it. But, you know, we got to we gotta start playing. 20 seconds to go by. And I'm like, okay, man, uh, I got to have you make a choice, dude. And he's like, yeah, I know, I know. Just just give me a second. Let me, let me think. And, he, and th at this point, he checked his graveyard again. And he already checked it four times. That was, I'm sorry, that was the fourth time. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, let me count it down in my head. 25, 30, cool. Judge, and like, as I was saying, oh, I'm sorry, I, I went, okay, man, just hold on a second. Judge, and like, as I went up to say judge, he goes, slow play? And I was like, yeah, man, I, I got to slow play you here because I get it, you're in a spot. But we need this time. We, we could use this time. Mm -hmm. We didn't really need the time because I had to kill the next turn. And I didn't want him to just sit there tanking the whole time and then just die. I wanted it to just like we need to get we need to get this <coughs> out. We need to get out of here. All right, meow. So 
Meow. Yeah, yeah, it's meow. My point is, <laughs> judge came, sat down, watched the match, play resumed as normal okay. as it should. Uh -huh. Don't be scared to call for slow play. If you believe that yeah, that's that what this whole judge of segment is about. On, this is what the whole judge segment is do about. It. You are not being a dick yep. if you are using it properly. Call you are you are being a you are being an active Magic community member. Yep. And not only are you looking out for yourself, but you're looking out for the other guys because that guy continues that kind of action throughout the day, throughout multiple events, and stuff like that. Like he's gonna get booted. Yeah, he's, he's gonna get removed because it's like, man, you have That's a, true. you sure do have a habit of doing this. You, yeah. you seem to win game one really quick, Lantern player, and then you slow way down. That's stalling. Yeah, you're gonna get like you're gonna get enough offenses here where you're gonna get DQ. This is not okay behavior. Call Tech, call people on it. Techno Mage said uh, he would definitely uh, use Josh's method. I agree with that. I agree uh, 100. percent You should always use every method. The under the table mouth one. I, you should always use every method that I talk about on this uh, on this show, and in real life if you ever meet me. But again, just listen to me. Don't be scared to do it. Don't abuse it. Use it. It's oh, it's fuck. there. It's there for is this an after for you guys special? to use. Did it just turn into an after school? It special? should be. It should be. Don't abuse slow. it. Don't use it. Abuse it. <laughs> oh wow! I didn't realize I did that. You did. Yeah, I guess I kind of did. All right, cool. It, it's something that's that's it's there for you to to actively use. Don't be don't be afraid to use it. And also so, don't be a dick about it. The next thing that I want to talk about, Chris, mm -hmm. is uh, the uh, <laughs> the new sets that are coming out. Oh, okay. I want to talk about the new sets because specifically Battle Bond. Well, okay. So we have all the spoilers for Battle Bond, correct? Yes. We have the whole list. Yes. <laughs> uh, so bring the list up. Um, okay. We're not going to go through it because this is easy for you guys to do on your own. But, um, Big spoilers are great to for. Yeah, so uh, we're just going to go over the highlights because... Oh, don't look at those! Uh, those last, are M19, don't look at them! <laughs> last week, uh, we went over the spoilers, um, and everything wasn't there, correct? Or was um, it two weeks ago that we went over the spoilers? No, it was last week. I think I think everything was here, right. or we were like a day behind. Yes, you're, you're really bad at this game. All right, so you're gonna you're just going to give everybody... Uh, you're going to make everybody dizzy. You're going to make everybody right. so blurry. here we go. Um... We had doubling season. We were excited about that. Mm -hmm. We had uh, Arena Rector. Yep. Very cool stuff. Yeah, we talked about that one. Yeah, yeah uh, we talked True about True Name coming back, uh, which is beautiful because uh, he needed to not be $30, you know, because people want to play him. So he'll, I don't know what he is right now. He'll not be $30. $30. And then he'll be $30 again. Sure, sure. But again, we, talked about, we talked about that in um, episode, three episode three of be able to, you know, be able to. Once these once these cards get reprinted, yep. you're gonna hit about a twenty to thirty percent decrease mm -hmm. in that card. So that's when you're gonna want to pick that up. Right. Um, I won't keep touching on that. Um, yeah, you so can then, check out you can check out episode three yeah, so, in in our video log here or on YouTube. Yep. Uh, we've got Lantex, Narcana Revenant. These are all cards that are like fifteen to twenty dollars that need reprints. Sure. Um, you've got Mystic Confluence, which was I think it was about ten bucks, fifteen bucks before it 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 creeped up there a little bit. Sure. But, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of printings of that card. Uh, Greater Goods been it's been printed, not to hell and back, but it's been printed enough. So sure, it's just, sure. It's what one did, of those cards. What 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 new stuff did you did you want to go over with the set release? Um, well, I, I I'm gonna scroll down because there's some stuff that I haven't uh, I ain't seen yet. Right. Um, cool. Well, I'm that's what I'm looking for. We we had the Seedborn Muse. Um, that's good stuff. I didn't see Vigor spoiled. I don't know. I feel like we had Vigor. I think we might have had the whole list. No, I don't think we did. Okay. So, um... You, you can tweet to, at us. Agree to disagree. Josh has a Twitter now. You can you can go on Twitter and tell him, <laughs> Hey, Dum Dum, you guys talked about that card. Oh, flip coins, yeah. Flip coins have interesting rules. Somebody asked me a, a good judge question. Um, if... If I flip and lose, does that mean my opponent wins? Because there's, there's some card in here that cares about whenever a player wins a flip. No! The only player that is involved in the flip of a coin is the player flipping the coin. So if they win, they win. If they lose, they lose. Nobody else wins or lose. It's just the player involved. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so right now, all the flip the flip a coin stuff, uh, like if you win 10 flips, you win the game. Um, yeah, they're, so like all the foils are like so $20, $30 right now. So, so uh, my brother, uh, he tweeted in. Or tweeted in. Now you, you got me talking about tweets. He messaged in and said uh, that uh, the flip of coin cards are hot, and that is that is very true. They're the hotness. Uh, we we sold out of those on on our account, and uh, yeah, it's just 
It's really silly. But like, again, it's just like the pirate stuff. A lot of the pirate foils, those like those spike to hell. Um, you know, it's new hotness and commander type stuff. Yeah, it's just yeah. like it's new. Like whether it's tribal or whether it's uh, some kind of game mechanic that's coming out, you're gonna get those kind of spikes uh, in the market, and you just gotta try to keep up with it if you want those cards. You gotta be fast, like Ricky Bobby. Hey, Ricky Bobby, gotta go fast. Yeah, Ral Zarek is back, baby. Ral Zarek is back. I love Expedite, by the way. Good. The card's great. Yeah, so, um, there's not a whole lot on here that I really see that I even give a shit about. No, but we could talk about the mess of the event Ooh. that is Battle. Why is there a missing S red common? Sky Shroud claim, baby. Um, yeah, so, no, go ahead. Talk about it. Well, okay, so Battle Bond has been a known quantity for, I think, at least three months. Uh -huh. But we didn't know exactly what it was we knew the name and then like a month ago we knew the format was two at a giant and we all assumed it was sealed to a giant because it's kind of the main go-to but apparently battle bond is also compatible with two at a giant draft and uh two at a giant draft is not available for the preview event or if you think about it in classical magic terms um the pre-release event weekend wow josh i you, you say i don't know what i'm doing uh, uh, um so, so this weekend, June second and third, mm -hmm. is Battle Bond uh, preview is what it's called. It is only sealed. It is recommended by Wizards to be pods of eight with three um, with two rounds. Um, but if you want to get more play, they suggest doing three plus rounds. But that's weird with eight eight people, four teams basically. Because you go like this, you go. Uh, these are two teams. These are two teams. Okay. Um, somebody's going to get flicked off here. Um, these two guys win, so now they're playing. That was the end of round one. Uh -huh. So this is round two. They're playing. Uh, this guy wins. So that's the end of round two. Do, why, why do we need to have a round three? Well, if you do it with, with Swiss, that's beautiful. Yeah, here, look at Emilio. Um, if you do it with Swiss, like you're going to get some round robin action where people end up playing lower, lower uh, places. Correct. But if you're prizing on standings, you run the risk of having people tie for the same rank, and also not. You could have people that are completely different and should be prized differently. I recommend if you're going to do this, you, you prize based on just a team's record. So if a team wins, you, you give them a, a, a pack per win or two packs per win type mm -hmm. thing. Um, and that's kind of what I'm going to do. So if, I could, so if I could shelf, selfishly... Uh, shame, shamelessly, shamelessly plug. Shamelessly plug yourself. Please. Shamelessly. Um, That's what we're doing here. We're plugging ourselves, good. baby. Good. We gotta let people know. So there's the gotta launch party. Know. Here is the preview. Is what we want. So it's it's not pre-release. It's preview. Um, I came up with all my numbers today and how this is gonna work. So Wizards has been putting out all kinds of different stuff, and it's all been mixed and mashed like the, the information hasn't been like concise and clear yeah. even on like their WPN website about like here's what to do and all that stuff it just didn't get updated and when it did it like was just like ah just go and have fun and you should have fun because it looks like a great set and it's gonna be fun oh it is definitely but like the organization of it's a little bit weird so I can't wait to uh, draft this if I get a chance to so I'm not doing one on the second at Pandemonium I'm doing one I'm doing two on the third the third Saturday no June, well, the second the second is Saturday. Okay. Um, You're doing it on Sunday. I'm doing it on Sunday because That's I have cool. my standard PPTQ guaranteed $1,000 cash prize, or not cash prize, uh, store credit prize this time around. You said PP. PP. Um, I have that on Saturday, so I'm doing two of these on Sunday. Cool. And it's going to be fun. I think I have a good event lined up here. I think I've priced it very reasonably and stuff like that. And on top of that, my noon event... Uh, Cody Michaels and Josh Thompson, the Pando uh -huh. boys, are yeah. going to be playing as a team. If you get to face off against them and you beat them, you get two additional prizes or two additional Battle Bond packs yeah. added to your prize pool. Bounty Hunter. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Put That's a bounty great. bounty on the guys. That's great. So, Battle Bond's information has been a mess. The set it looks cool and it should be fun. Yeah. So, get out there, find it at your local place, and, and play. Regardless, play. Absolutely. Um, last, last thing about it is that the following week is the launch party. This is like release day kind of stuff. Yeah. And then the same weekend. We have Saturday, Sunday events type thing for this. Um, this can be draft. The other one can only be sealed. We're sure. going to do it just as sealed because it's more traditional that way. 
and we're gonna learn from what happens at the the preview event to see what we do for the launch event. Because like, if I can make it a better experience, I'm going to. I'm gonna do my best to make that happen. Oh, well, shut up. You're so sweet. All right, what did you want to say? Um, well, um, I I just wanted to talk about um, some of the new M27 stuff that came out today. Oh, not <laughs> M27. <laughs> It's uh, not M27, it's M99. So incoming, legit spoilers, if I can get this thing to stop freaking out. Um, so M19. 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 Man, was way off. The next core set, the set that comes in after Dominaria, uh, there have been some cards yeah, that have been, been leaked, yeah. and I think some that have just been straight spoiled as well. I don't know exactly how all these have come up. So that's Battle Blonde. Blonde? Battling the Blondes. Battle Blondes. Um... We have a wall, an 05 wall, it's nothing. Uh, Salvager of Secrets, 5 drop 2-2, two, two, enters the battlefield, return target, instant restriction card from your graveyard to your hand. Cool. Poop. I don't want to talk about that one because you want to talk about that one. <laughs> uh, 3 drop artifact, 1-1 one, one flyer, enters the battlefield, draw a card. Ugh. Not good enough for affinity. Boring. Uh, I don't know exactly what's going on in these. Quick creature gets plus two plus O and has vigilance and is a knight in addition to its other types. Ooh, history of Benalia. Get it. Get it, knights. Whenever a quick creature attacks, create a two two knight. Oh, this thing's awesome. Ooh. Pay three and equip three. It's not even mythic? No, it's just rare. Shitty titties. <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, progenitus growth. Uh, that's not what it is. Anyways. Uh, six drop. Enchant creature gets plus seven plus seven and has trample. Progenitus. I did. I did. And then Apex of Power. Oh, this is, the, this is kind of a neat card. It's pay 10. Yeah. Exile neat. the top seven cards. You can cast them until you're out of turn. And Boring. if you cast Apex from your hand, you get 10 mana of a single color. So you play it in a mono red deck and you go, okay, I'm going to cast this. I'm going to get seven. I'm going to get a new hand, basically. And I'm going to spend the 10 mana that I spent on this. You get free spells. Hey, Chris, this is this is what we call a du a standard dud. Okay? Oh, absolutely. This card was Why? built for Commander. Commander. Oh, oh, baby. Look what's on the screen. Okay. All right. So, so this is Josh's card that he's all geeked about. I can talk Go for it. I can talk about this for 27 I seconds. I hope so. Wait, what? <laughs> Not long. Man, so, <laughs> uh, Sovereign's Bite is pretty cool. Um, it will give... Hopefully a boost to um, the Blackburn that I play. Um, the Jacob Blackburn? <laughs> the, the, uh, the Blackburn that soon enough um, will be a um, a mainstay in Modern. You, you're going to have your own division of Burn, is I what will. you're trying to say I in will. Modern. And and so I, think, I think you could get there. It's Bump in the Night, Gandhi's Machination. So Sovereign's Bite brings uh, another element to um, this list. Um, it is a... Everybody says, oh... It's a lightning healer. I was gonna say, what do they say, Josh? <laughs> just just stop, like, oh. yeah, just like Gantis. No, it's not because yeah, it says target player. It player. Doesn't, doesn't have anything to do with target creature. So the reason that, that lightning, water. correct. The reason that um, lightning helix is so good is because it can it can peg off your guy and you gain three. Yeah. You know, so it's it's doing multiple things. Well, with this card, you're just going straight for the dome piece. All right, you just want to hit them for three. You want to gain a little life. You're not getting a creature off the board, but this may find its way into the 75 at some point. It's a two drop, so and it's sorcery, but I like the fact that it gets around uh, Dispel. Yeah. Um, I also like the fact um, that it is one black and one colorless, so it can find its way into multiple decks. This is going to the vampire deck that I talked about. Oh, this the is casual. The pushes oh, it over yeah. This is it. Vampires. Like, look, it's got a vampire. It does have a vampire. Lady. Sucking out a dude's neck right you, there. You don't know that. Um, so when you brought this card up to me, I was like, yeah, awesome. I think that's cool. I think you should play and test that in the, the Bump in the Night Black yeah. Lightning deck. I yeah. think that, that I think that could work. My concern to you was like, it does cost two, though. It does. So I don't know how good that's going to be. Yep. But you, you, you made a decent case for at least actually trying to test it, and that's... Um, that it can it can kind of be a fog in sometimes, and it allows you to still be aggressive. Yep. And uh, I like all of those things, and I also like brewing with like legit synergies. Yeah. So, like, there's gonna be people t people that tell you like this this card has no place in modern. Those people are just way too harsh. Mm -hmm. They're just kind of being 
jerks and they're not willing to like think outside the box. You should be able to think outside the box. I oh. think this is cool. I think you should play this hey, stuff. Look at look over. Move our move our fat heads and look at Ronald Ross's comment right there. Ronald Ross. Yeah, this is on the uh, check it out. He says. This and Bump in the Night and Red Black Shell, maybe. <laughs> he says, I still say the card will be played somewhere in some format. And again, that's what I said. I said it it, it has it has its applications in I multiple. I didn't play him that. I, didn't, yeah, <laughs> I no, can't no, believe I, it. I, yeah, I just looked over and saw, I seen it. Ronald, Ronald says, Russ, dude. Never count cheap burnout, comma, ever. Dot, 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 dot. I love this card's flavor text. What does it say? You have given all your... You have given all to your kingdom, dear knight. Sincerely, sincerely shall be your prize. Serenity. I can't read it because I'm That's blind fine. It's and okay. it's all fake blurry. It's okay, you're well, it's special. Not fake. Shut up. All right, so uh, yeah, so we got through the spoilers. We got through um, everything that we wanted to talk about with Judge's Corner and yep. what was going on with Travis. Yep, yep. Um, so I think now. What do we get to do? We get to move on to our favorite segment. Favorite segment is well, I'm like, I'm like spoiling all my stuff now. <laughs> um, I guess we need we need like a little catchy name for this one, but it's our our local magic events that are coming up. Oh, that's a real catchy phrase. I don't I don't have a catchy phrase for this. If you have a catchy phrase, leave it in the comment section below Please, or, God, or tweet at us. I want to talk about tweeting really really fast out. because if you look, Josh now has a Twitter. Yeah, this is. This I, is mine. Wait. I told him he probably didn't need it, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. over here, right where my hand Hold is. On, Stop no. looking at the Move. screen. Look at the camera. Move. <laughs> oh yeah. So Josh's Twitter is so crazy. Good. It's Mom's Basement uh, MTG. Um, he just got on there. Give him a follow. Uh, shout him out if you have questions or you want to. You have segments that you'd like to see on the show. Topics that we can talk about. Absolutely. Different stigmas in the game that we can overcome. Uh, hit him. Hit him up. Hit me up. We'll we'll talk about this. Anyways. Uh, local upcoming magic events for us. So th on this week's PPTQs, we have two, just two, as opposed to all the other weeks that have been like five and three and friggin' six over here. There are none on Sunday. There are two this Saturday. And as I mentioned, mine is one of them. Okay. So we'll start. We'll go to that one last. Yes, because uh, you already shamelessly promoted yourself. I, I don't know what you're talking about. And I love it. I don't know what you're talking about. So Odyssey Games, they have one. I believe it is also standard. They're both standard this weekend. Uh, we have... Let's see. Where is theirs? Man, they got a lot of stuff going on here. Good for them. Good for them. So Magic Standard, PPTQ at Odyssey Games. They are doing... A ten dollar entry, capacity of forty players. What do you what do you got on your little card there, Josh? The local yokels. I kinda like it. That's not a bad segment segment name. I kinda like it. It is it's, you should have done it in Sharpie though. Local um, yokels. Local yokels. We got our local yokel events. Right. Um let the yokels know what they're uh, what they got going on here, okay? The event is capped at, at forty players, total prize of three packs of dominaria per entry. Um so, like, first, basically, you get a box and the invite, and then the, there's some trickle down there. Uh, and Or you could turn the prize packs into $3 store credit. I guess that's a, that's a neat option. Um, so, if you're... I'm not trying to be rude, but if you're looking to just spike an event, you don't want to have to slog through a ton of rounds, like, okay, head out to Odyssey Games in Kalamazoo. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and we say that, we say that every week. We're going to continue to say that every week because... We should have, we should talk about last week's by the way. I have some information about those. Great, I'm 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 happy to talk about that. But first, like the reason that we're saying this is, you know, oh, you can go to this place. We're not we're not saying these places are a dump. No, by any means. What we're saying is is that, um, you know, it's a it's an unknown. You know, it's yeah. an unknown store. It's not a it's not a huge store. So a lot of those stores have small turnout. So the reason uh, that you want to go, you know, if you're if you're an upper upper level player, you're going to want to go to this store and you're going to want to spike that thing. Yeah, because like because you know, you, the competition's not going to be huge there. Right. You know, you're going to get there may be a couple guys that are like, well, "Fuck you," you know, like <laughs> I'm a hey, I'm a magical badass. This you know? is this is a yokels event apparently. Yeah, and so you know, uh, of course, those guys are going to be upset to hear that. But again, sure. you know, we if we're everybody has a different focus when they go to yes. play a competitive event. When yes. I go to play a competitive event, I want to compete. I want to play magic and I want to compete. Um, when other people go uh, to a competitive event, they just want the main prize. Yeah. Like, there are guys that are just like, 
I hope that exactly seven other people show up, and I hope that I crush a couple guys so yeah. that I can get this invite, go home, and not have to worry about weekend magic until the RPTQ, which those are coming up. Obviously not for this season, but previous season, those are coming up too. Um, right, so uh, what do we got next here? We've had... Uh, you got Pandemonium Games. No, that's safe for last. That's it. Oh, shit. I'm telling We've you, there's two literally only on the this two. Weekend. Wow. You can, you can go out to Odyssey in Kalamazoo if you want to make that drive, by all means. But if you want to come out and you want to compete and you want to have a bunch of people... And here's the cool thing about my prize pool. My prize pool is guaranteed at $1,000 uh, across like top eight. But for like the last three of my PPTQs, I have gone down. I've added. I've been able to get enough people to add to the prize pool and go down to like top sixteen. And so, like, I think that I usually add uh, something like two hundred twenty-five dollars, if not more, to this prize pool, just because we get so many players out. We're doing yeah. six sometimes. I think we get close to seven. What would seven be? I don't care. Whatever. I'm tired. Um, but it's gonna be it's gonna be great. I'm gonna have Jesse Myring. Uh, fantastic uh, Northern Ohio judge that was originally from this area. Um, I love working with Jesse. I love learning from Jesse. We run really solid events together, and so I recommend. I think it's this one. I recommend coming out to my PPTQ, which was uh, for Pro Tour Spaghetti, but now we know spaghetti is uh, Ravnica, so it's going to be served with with dragon meatballs. With a side of Ravnica, baby. Sure. A side of Death Right Shaman. Right. Ooh, I like that. That was return. So come on out. Playing my event. Yeah, um, so... Um, my entry is $30 any way you got it. Um, but, like I said... This, that's this, the way you got it, any way you need I it. try to run one of the best PPQs each season, and Stop I think we do a pretty PP. damn good job. You're killing me. TQ. Um, okay, so I did want to, like, briefly touch on... Me? No. <laughs> no, on last week of last week's events. Absolutely. So... Oh uh, man, what was it? The the one I really wanted to talk about real quick was BC Comics. Um, on Friday, they got their new space. They're 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 in their their non temporary space now. They got it open, and I, I would like to I'd like to spotlight it a little bit because it it looks nice. It looks nice. Um, I don't know why that's a video. Oh, there you go. They're getting everything in. Uh, I heard Friday went well. Um, Sunday, they had their PPTQ, and they also had... Hey, what's up? And uh, they also had a Legacy 1K yep. that our, our buddy, local Artie Chera, played in. And he doesn't play a ton of Legacy. He likes to uh, grind it out with Miyaki, though. He does. He plays a decent amount. No, no, no. He likes to grind it out with Miyaki. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I missed that one. And Artie took it down. Artie, Artie won. What the shit, really? Boy doesn't even know what Brainstorm does. Yeah, he no, he doesn't even have Brain to Storm. Artie won. Artie took it down. He needs like one more point to like qualify for their Invitational later Man, this year. He's been he's been fucking lighting it up lately. Artie's been doing great. Shout we out to Artie. We need to hey, listen. Hey, Artie. Hey, hey, Artie. I'm calling you out, bro. We're gonna we need you on the uh, we need you on the show next week because Ooh. we this is the second week we've talked about you. That would have been a, that would have been a good uh, because guess this week. Yeah, I mean, you, it was pretty good. But yeah, like, you so you top Ford. Yeah, the uh, the modern one was that it they top, had. Was it top two or top four? No, it was top four. four. It was top four. He yeah. lost in fact. No, no, no. He top four the uh, the Mox event that I went to that I top eight in. Yes, yes. No, he um, no. And then he, he no. He got second. Okay. He made it to the finals. That's, yeah. So and then he took what second in the uh, the one that you're talking about now? No, the BC one he took the BC modern one he took uh, fourth. The Mox Emerald mm. event. He took second, okay. and then he just won this this legacy event. You're right; he has been on fire. He's been on fire. We got to get him on here. We got to get him on the show. Him and a few Audie. of the other guys. Audie. Audie. We'd be talking to you next week, Audie. Put your fork in my sauce. You're gonna have to tell that story one yeah, day, and it won't will. be funny because no, nobody be. was there. But he and three other guys tonight went uh, 301 in my cash prize Wednesday event. By the way, we got 40 players again in that event. I have to do another, and I'm not I'm not upset about it. I'm really impressed, but I'm just I'm kind of blown away. I told the guys if they, if they pulled off 40 players on, on Wednesday night, they did it once, and I didn't think they would do it again so quickly, but, like, I think it's been less than a month. Mm -hmm. They pulled 40 players again on a Wednesday night. I got to get them another Modern pizza party. Is, Modern's exciting. Modern's great. Modern's great. I mean, great. I get to go 3-1 in the event every week. <laughs> That's cash money. It's exciting to me. Yeah. Um, we had we had 40 players. The the top two tables, so four guys went 301. Everybody else yeah. was 3-1, went down to like 
the 12th place, prized yeah. out over $350 in cash. Yeah, that's it's, cool. It's it's nuts. If you're in the area, you need to open up Wednesdays and come play uh, Modern with us at Pandemonium. Um, all right, so we talked about that. We talked about the the last week ones yeah. that I wanted to touch we're gonna on. Get on uh, we're going to get Artie on next week. Yeah, we're going to make it happen. Absolutely. Um, I don't remember what this is, so I'm just going to go into studio mode for a quick second and make sure... Oh, okay. Uh, this happened tonight in our modern event. Uh, Gavin Kukinir, um, he kept a no-lander with the hollow one deck, and this was his turn one. Hmm... So, let me see if I'm, I can I'm see not, yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, well, figure it out. Figure it out. All Tell right, me what so, happened. Okay, he top decks a land. No. Well, he kept a no-lander. He kept a no-lander. Okay. Um, I'm, I don't even know if, if he was on the, the player of the draw here, but he did not top deck the land. Like, that was not his draw if he was on the, 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 the draw. The, oh, it's a Street Wraith. Yes. There's a Street Wraith. So, okay. So, he cycled Street Wraith. That's, that's one card. All right. And then... He, he drew off of that. Yes. What did he draw? He drew Scalding Turn. Yes, he did. Okay. So he's a he's a motherfucking boss. Yes. Um, and then he went and fetched Scalding Turn into Blood Crypt like a badass and took three. Fetch Shock. So he's down to like 15. He's down to 15. Yep. Mm-hmm. Then he Faithless Looted. Yep. And he pitched Blood Gas. That's number two. And he pitched Goblin Lore. And that's number three, which means Hollow One. Costs negative six. No. <laughs> which means Hollow One is free. And off the Faithless Looting, he hit two Hollow Ones. He only had one in that opener. Ew, what a grosso. So turn one, he played three Hollow Ones and passed back. Yeah, with a no-lander. Yeah. What a fucking monster. Yeah. And maybe one day we'll it's see. Pretty great, we'll, right? We'll, we'll be able to, you know, spotlight and go back and be like, remember when we used to talk about you, Gavin? I remember. I, I remember. remember. I remember when you was just a little boy. <laughs> and now you crushing events. You crushing events. And uh, Gavin was one of the 301s tonight, too. He was the top seed, by the way. He took first, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, he's my only Shout fucking loss. Good job, Gavin. Fuck Who you, may Gavin. have left his phone here somewhere tonight. I have Fuck to go look for you, looking Gavin. For I lost to you tonight. <laughs> Good job. All right, cool. Well, then uh, let's wrap it up. Yeah. All right. Uh, next week, same time, same place, uh, Magic After Dark. Uh, don't forget, uh, next week, um, Magic Afternoon. Yes. We're so cute. We haven't really talked we come about up that with, a whole lot. Yeah, we come up... Well, I'll, I'll talk about it right now. Talk so, about it right now. Um, we... We're gonna start doing. Um, we're gonna start grinding on MTGO um, uh, Wednesdays from um, one o'clock. You want to make it let's, 1:30. Let's say one to start. Um, because yeah, like look out for us at like, one o'clock. Because we could get here and like we might have to like deal with some kind of issue. Yeah, or we'll, we'll, we'll we'll tweet it out. We'll uh, we'll send it out. Um, but follow yeah, us on look, Twitter. Yeah, look for us to uh, to start grinding at one o'clock. So uh, we got the uh, the gold package. Yeah, so um, we're starting off at nearly like 500 tickets or whatever. Yeah, and um, what do you want to start with? Well, I, I hopefully we start with modern because that's what I know best. Uh, so then we should start with standard. Well, you're you're the standard guy. <laughs> I can take care of that. I, no, I, was, I was joking. I just wanted to mess with you. Um, but yeah, we got the gold package in that. You can tell us what you want to see by tweeting at us as well. Yeah, absolutely. You'd be like, hey guys, I want to see you stream X Y Z deck. Yeah. So yeah, how about we do that uh, next week? We're gonna start off. Um, you guys uh, shoot a shoot a little tweet at us. Yeah. Uh, let us know what you want to play. Leave it in the comments. Um, we'll see if anybody actually uh, you know has anything I, cool that they want to see. It's funny because I'll like, play I'll play Mono Green Stompy. Oh, we should do that. No, because we just talked about it this week. Yeah, but it would be fun. Anyways, anyways, it's <laughs> it's funny because like we like a lot of our viewers right now are our local community. Of course. And so like they'll. What, what's been happening to me at least I don't know if it's to you but like instead of them actually like writing a comment or something like that because then they have to like put themselves out yeah, there yeah, yeah. they'll like message me directly or they'll okay. tell me in person kind yeah, of thing yeah. and it's cool and everything like that but I would like you to help the rest of the guys like help me help you yeah exactly show show them that it's okay to like leave a message it's, yeah. it's fine but um yeah so magic afternoon on Wednesdays from uh from one to four yeah about that um also, uh, catch us next week. Uh, we usually start about twelve thirty. Yeah, uh, at least we try to. We'll have. Uh, we'll have. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to give him too many credit. We'll have Artie Chera. One hundred percent. We're gonna have that little bitch boy. We're gonna have a special guest sitting in between us, talking Ooh. about how fucking good he is. That's hilarious. Yeah, uh, talking about <laughs> talking about how good he is, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll get after it. All right. Uh, as for tonight. 
been good seeing you guys. Peace out. Love you, bye. <laughs> Love you, bye.